So it's Friday. I took the day off from work just so I could get caught up. On the agenda today, fold, let's get a little, I'm a redhead, I burn. Even in Vermont, I burn. It happens. What I got planned today is I'm gonna put an official winch, manual winch, on the 2280BH ESP. If you remember, older video, our electric winch went off by itself, tried to push the roof into the atmosphere <laughs> all on its own. And I replaced it in an emergency home camping week with a locally sourced winch. It's basically something you would put on a trailer to hoist an ATV onto a mini trailer, you know, some utility trailer. So it's not the right kind. It doesn't have a clutch. Anyway, I called Goshen. They sourced the manual winch designed for this actual trailer. And I got the real deal. The real deal. And it's going in today. So what you see happening right now is I'm gonna move the trailer onto the driveway, which is a good, clean, nice environment to work on. And when I get the winch done, we're gonna raise the roof and my wife's gonna come out here and go through all the systems, electrical, water, everything, make sure it's working. All right, I think I got everything I need here. I'm gonna need a sawzall to cut the very end of the cable off. If you watch the old video when I put this manual winch in, I had to weld the cable to itself to hold it in place. The new one, by the way, has a nice little clamp it came with, and it's beautiful. Absolute Frankenstein monster. So here it is, this is the manual winch. It really isn't that much different than the one I got. However, the one I got has a clutch on it. So it won't freewheel out of control and drop down on you. It's the proper RV one. And then also look at this. This is where the metal bent when the electric one tried to keep raising the roof. That thing made a ton of torque, so dangerous. I, this is bending it back. It was V'd really bad. I had to use a hydraulic jack right here and actually lift it to to bend it back as straight as this is now. So hopefully we'll be in good shape. All right, I'm gonna unbolt this thing, hopefully get access to the cable, trim it, and get the new one installed. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Bolt holes are right here, and they should line up perfectly. Now the nice thing about this one it was like 20, 29 bucks, I think. And these are available at like almost every local hardware store. Uh, tractor supply, they're everywhere and they're cheap. So if you have to, in an emergency, you can get one of these to work. Now, because of the design of this, I had to make this really long, stupid handle, custom made. <laughs> I'm so thankful the new one came with its own extended handle. I hope it clears this. We'll see. This one seems a lot longer than the one I got. I might have to weld metal to the new one. There's my weld. Maybe? Ooh, that works better. Is that done? Yeah, that's through. I'll probably take the cover off the bottom so I can work from underneath. That's out. Part of history, that was, that thing uh, rescued our 2020 COVID camping season. All right, I'm gonna tape this and cut it, but I'm not feeling real good about this. It's too tight, it's too short. So just like everything on this camper so far, nothing has been easy. I don't think this is enough length, but I am gonna try to cut it right here. For safety, you need to have a certain amount that wraps around your winch. It's gotta kind of wind through and around and then you clamp it. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this, but I have a feeling I'll be replacing this cable today. Hopefully I can source it locally and we won't miss our camping trip next week. Normally this would be something I do on the bench with a nice vise. So I'm gonna wrap this in duct tape as tight as I can. 
hopefully I get a clean cut. Oh, this is ugly. So much ugliness here. Let's give it a try. So I'm losing, man, about eight inches. And we're gonna cut it right here. This is what it is. This is the moment of truth. Ah. All right, pretty sure 338 is the size. Yes, it is. Look at that, 338. An English size socket. I don't use these anymore. That's rare. Wait a minute. I'm going to put my stabilizers down. I forgot to do that. Get out of practice. You can be long enough. <laughs> so high off the ground. Ooh, look at that. A little too much. Covers off. Here's our cable. Now the instructions are pretty clear. Come through with the cable, come out this hole, go around the shaft once and straight up to here and bolt it down. That's not a lot of length. That's like what? Two inches maybe? Three inches? Hopefully I have enough. It's going to be very close. If not, this day is going to get bigger in a hurry. Come on, cable. Let's get along. Let's make good decisions together. Man, that's close. Is it long enough? I don't think so. It's, <laughs> it's not. There's no way. Oh, this just got to be a real big project suddenly. It's new cable time. All right, right now, so I can make our camping trip, I'm gonna do a temporary fix and order a new line to be done at a later date. So I'm gonna run to the hardware store and I'll be right back. All right, so here's my plan. This is the part that goes on the, um, the winch. It goes around and around. The part that's straight right here this never goes on the winch. So what I want to do is have an area with my connections down here that never go on the winch. So those cable connections I'm going to make with ferrules and some clamps don't end up going around the winch. If they go around the winch, you can put side loads on ferrules and they're, they'll break or they could. So I think that's a good plan for now until I get my new cable and it will allow us to safely go camping until the new cable arrives. And then I'll do another video installing the cable. I don't want to, <laughs> but I have to. So I'm gonna get started. I'm first gonna cut this cable maybe here, cause I gotta fold it back. And I bought 12 feet of new cable just in case I screw up and I need to recut. Man, that's ugly. So to review, this is my plan for strength on the loop. I'm going to use two ferrules, spaced apart, yay. And then on the very end, clamp so it doesn't slide out of the ferrules with one of these. Massive redundancy, lots of strength. Oh, I wish I could sit up under here. I almost can. <laughs> I can. Look at this place. This camper is hilariously high off the ground. All right, check that out. So we've got two on this loop. I'm gonna make the loop small and then I'll put that clamp down here on the end. When you're doing anything with cables and really heavy lifting, especially the kind of lifting where people might be underneath the object. I mean, we'll put the safety rails in, but still, you don't want this to drop. So redundancy is a good idea. And this should be strong enough. This is a lot of redundancy. It'll be a lot of uh, surface area friction on the cable. What do you think? Pretty cool. So I have a, um, a swag tool. I think that's what they call it. I'm going to clamp those ferrules down. This is it. It looks like a big giant bolt, cu bolt cutter. And it's to compress the ferrules. It doesn't say how many crimps. So I'm just going to do two on each one. 
<laughs> no, that's it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that monstrous crimp. All right, we'll do one more just underneath it. Now the trick is to remember to loop the other cable through here before I crimp the other cable. If I don't, then I blow it. All right, going for it. That was good. All right, that's ferrule number one. That's pretty hardcore crimping. I use these clamps on my Bowflex. Built my own cables. Oh, that works so good. They're still working great. Man, that's a lot. I think that's a lot of strength on that cable. When you cut cable, this 3 16 cable, using a cutoff wheel, it goes so slow, so easy, so you don't disturb the cleanliness of the end of the cable. And then they'll go through these ferrules perfectly. I gotta feed it through here first. Full feet, brand new, beautiful cable. I probably could build my own, but I'm just so unfamiliar that I think I'm gonna order it so I don't have to figure it out as I go along and waste a lot of time. All right, feeding the ferrule. Let's make the loops. Got two through. Whoo, I pray this works. Hopefully I can edit all this out and make this a lot quicker for you than it has been for me. Oh yeah. You can see it bounce back when it's done. All right, we'll put the final clamp on. Hopefully this is good. Hopefully I did it the right length. Hopefully this doesn't hit the winch. Otherwise I'm gonna hate myself for not cutting it back further. And I could have, maybe should have. All right, I think triple clamping was a good call. Man, it's got a hold. That's it. Let's try it. I'm gonna hook this. I gotta cut the cable. I'm gonna hook it up to the winch. I gotta feed through here. Hopefully this is the right length. All right, so this is the doohickey. And what I gotta do is run the cable through this hole underneath the axle, under this little clamp doohickey. I almost didn't give myself enough. Wow. Come so far to mess up now. At least this is better than welding. The other one I had to weld. That was terrible. That was a horrible design. This is so much more user friendly. And if this cable didn't break, this would have been a quick job. Other than this part right here. And that's it. Our cable is now mounted. Now we need to mount the winch. Oh, and I cut it the right length. Now one of the things I gotta do before I finalize this winch install, this is still bent. It's not perfect. I need to get it flatter. Otherwise you stress the winch, you put stress on the chassis, it, you need a flat mounting location that got bent by the electric winch. That's how much power that thing has. It's scary. So I'm gonna attempt to straighten it a little more than it is. This is a one and a half ton hydraulic jack. <laughs> it's what I used last time to get it closer to true. That's definitely flatter. I don't feel any more side load. Feels flat. It just lines up perfectly in the pre-existing holes on the frame. It's absolutely made for it. Grab your bolts, 
and bolt it down. It's that easy. That cable stuff is ugly business. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to deal with that this week. I was gonna have this done this morning, and as you can see, the sun is going down. All right, third bolt's on. These guys are finger tight. Now we're just gonna tighten it down. Tight. Nice and tight. So I'm covering the gear teeth in heavy grease. It's bearing grease basically. And then I'm going to grease the springs underneath. A giant amount of grease. Oh yeah makes it nice and messy all right going back up that's full height Oh, that manual control is so nice. The clutch, perfect. I'm gonna put my safety bars in. That should clear. Now, if I had that winch to begin with, maybe a hole saw or something right here would've worked, but no, I, th I actually think it just needs a whole new replacement cover. For now, this'll work. What a gorgeous night. So thankful that we're on the other side of the long, hard Vermont winter. All right, that clears. This last big tray goes under here and uses these big obnoxious bolts. So this is done for now, but I'm gonna have to tear back into this thing when my cable gets here. I think it said two weeks before it ships. Maybe by June, I'll have it done. I can't wait. This, I gotta admit, the temporary cable doesn't make me feel comfortable. I think it's safe, it hasn't budged. But still, it's, it's a puzzle. <laughs> it's not clean. All right. This cover is on. Top cover's on. I'm gonna put the propane cover on and set it up. All right, that was an amazing project and we are ready to leave on our camping trip. I've gone up and down on this thing a few times. It's rock solid. It's working. So it'll get us through this trip and we're so looking forward to it. This will be the first time we've been camping since Moose Hillock in 2020. And then we just locked it down and stayed home for the rest of the year. So this is pretty exciting time. That was a long process. I'm sorry this wasn't a simple install, but Recently, nothing's been simple on this camper. So I gotta say, I absolutely adore the manual winch, and I'll tell you why. It reminds me of my 1997 StarCraft, which was different, quieter, simpler, and in the middle of a campground at night, you can raise and lower this. The electric one was so loud, so crazy. This is easy to use, especially with it properly lubricated. It works fantastic. It's very smooth. It doesn't require much effort all the way to the top. And I'm so thankful for it. And gosh, Ed, thanks for sending it along and giving me the right part. So all done, all set. This is her. Actually, it's a him. Sarge is his name. And we're going camping.
Thanks for watching. God bless you. We'll see you next video.